Hi, um, in the first two videos, we have solved triangle problem number one and triangle problem number two. Um, in triangle problem number one, it is 60 degrees and 50 degrees. In triangle number two, it is 70 degrees and it is 60 degrees. And now we're going to solve triangle problem number three. And this angle is 70 degrees and 50 degrees. And we are looking for this unknown angle beta. And we will use elementary geometry skills and concepts. And the solution of triangle problem number three is based on the construction of problem number one and two. Uh, here is triangle problem number three. Well, that is 70 degrees, that is 50 degrees, and we are looking for the unknown angle beta. Uh, that is 80, 80, and then we'll make this angle 20 degrees. And look at this triangle here, A, B, E, 50, 80, and this will be 50 degrees. So that is an isosceles triangle. So A, B will be congruent to A, E. And let me call A, E small b, and A, B will be small b as well. And I'm going to construct an equilateral triangle here with AE, the base of the triangle. Well, that is not difficult to do. I'm going to measure the seven AE. I'm going to do one more arc. I'm going to call this point G. I'm going to connect G to E. And I'm going to connect G to A. And I'm going to call this point D. And I'm going to call this point F. I'm going to connect these two points. Well, the next thing is we're going to focus on two triangles here, FGA on the left and DGE on the right. And now we're going to put down what we know. We know that it is 60 degrees, it is 60 degrees, so that is 20 degrees, it is 20 degrees, and it is small b, but um, Based on the construction, that is an equilateral triangle. There is small b, and there is small b. So there is small b, and there is small b. And there is 60 degrees as well. If there is 60, this one will be 120, and there is 120, it is 60. And we can see that the triangle on the left and the triangle on the right are congruent. The reason is quite simple, because we have angle, side, angle. So these two triangles are congruent. And that means that FG will be congruent to GD. But then the 60 degrees, and then this an isosceles triangle, the sum of these two angles is 120 degrees. That means F and D must be 60 degrees each. So 60 here and 60 there. So we have another equilateral triangle on the top. And I'm going to call this small d, and this one will be small d and small d as well. I'm going to transfer the information to the original diagram. It is d, small d, and small d. We also know that these two segments are parallel because the alternate interior angles are congruent. So these two segments, these two segments are parallel. If these two segments are parallel, the corresponding angles must be congruent. So this angle will be actually 80 degrees. And that is also 80 degrees as well. Well, the next thing I would like to do is I'm going to locate a point, which I call H, on CA, 
such that HA will be congruent to AD. And I'm going to use a compass to construct that point. I'm going to measure AD. And construct the point H. I'm going to call this point H. I'm going to connect H to D. For now, I would like to focus on two triangles here. The triangles on the top and the triangles at the bottom. Well, I'm going to put in what we know here. It is 20 degrees. It is 80 degrees. It is 80 degrees. So this is an isosceles triangle. And we're going to look at this big triangle here from A to D to C. It is also isosceles because it is, it is, I mean, um, from here to here is 60 degrees. But this big angle is 70 degrees. That means it is 10 degrees. So 10 degrees and 10 degrees is 20 degrees. So that is an isosceles triangle. From A to D is B plus D. That means that from D to C would be B plus D. And it is B plus D as well. Well, we're going to look at the triangle AHD here. AHD. We know that it is 20 degrees. And it is, well, based on the construction, based on our construction, HA is congruent to, to AD. It is isosceles. That means the sum of these two angles is 160 degrees. That means they must be 80 degrees each. And we know that from A to D is B plus D. So B plus D on the other side as well. So we can see that these two triangles are actually congruent. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. And the segment across from the 20 degree angles must be congruent. And we know that from F to D is small d, so this one will be small d as well. From F to D is small d, so from H to D must be small d, so that is small d. Let me put it over here. Well, the next thing I would like to do is I'm going to connect H to Q. And I would like to show that I would like to show that uh, this triangle here, HQD, is actually another equilateral triangle. Well, here we go. I'm going to pull out the quadrilateral here, AHQD, AHQD. I pull this out. I'm going to put in the information that we know. That is 10 degrees. And that is 10 degrees, and that is 80 degrees. Remember, that is 20 degrees, that is 80 degrees, and that's 80 degrees. Well, 10 degrees, 80 degrees, then that will make this a 90 degree angle because the sum of the three angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. When well, we have 80 degrees here and 90 degree angle. So these two triangles, these two triangles here, must be congruent by angle, side, angle. That means these two segments are congruent. Well, but look at this segment here. This segment is, I'm going to look at these two triangles here. This segment is a common side to both triangles. And it is 90, and it is 90. So, I would say that these two triangles are also congruent by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. In other words, HQ must be congruent to RD. I mean, HQ will be congruent to QD. Well, I'm going to look at this angle here. 
this angle here, I would say, is 40 degrees. Well, this is 60 degrees and this is 80 degrees. So this one has to be 40 degrees. The sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. And this angle here is 80 degrees. We know that. 40 and 80. So this angle here must be 60. So this angle must be 60 degrees. But this is an isosceles triangle. If this is 60, this one will be 60, and that one will be 60 as well. So we actually, this is, this is an equilateral triangle here. But we know that from H to D, it's, it's little d, it's small d. So that means QD and QH will be small d as well. So I'm going to put it over here, this is small d, this is small d. So let's summarize what we have so far. Well, this is an equilateral triangle, BBB. It is also an equilateral triangle. And we call it D, D, and D. And we have just shown it is also an equilateral triangle. It is small d, small d, and small d. Okay, so I'm going to reflect this triangle, H, B, Q, this triangle, reflect this triangle along H, B. I make a reflection, I make a copy of this, but on the other side of H, B. And that is not difficult to do. I'm going to measure H, Q. I'm going to use a compass to measure H, Q. And make a knock here. And I'm going to measure BQ as well. I'm going to measure BQ. I'm going to make another arc. And I'm going to call the intersection point R. I'm going to call this point R. I'm going to connect H to R. And I'm also connect B to R. I'm going to connect RQ. I'm going to connect A to R as well. Well, basically, I just make a refraction. I make a copy of HBQ, but on the other side of HB. Now, the next thing is I want you, um, I want to focus on this triangle here, RQA, RQA here, and we're going to write down what we know. Based on the construction, we know that based on the construction, we know that HQ is congruent to HR, and HQ is congruent to, I mean, BQ congruent to BR. Well, these two triangles here, these two triangles here are congruent because we have side, side, side situation, side, side, side. So these two triangles are actually congruent. That means this angle and that angle are the same. They must be congruent. But look at this angle here. This angle, the sum of these two angles is 180 degrees and the sum of these two angles are 180 degrees. But these two angles are the same, that means these two angles here must be congruent. And that will make these two triangles, that will make these two triangles congruent by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. These two triangles are congruent.
the one on the left and the one on the right. And then we'll make these two segments congruent. And these two angles congruent as well. This angle here and this angle is congruent. But together they make a 180 degrees. That means each one of them must be 90. And now we're going to look at this big triangle here. The big triangle on the left and the triangle on the right. Well, again, they are congruent. The reason is quite simple. Psi, angle, psi on the left, psi, angle, psi. So we had a lot of congruent triangles here. But we know that it is 10 degrees. This angle is 10 degrees from the original diagram. But these two triangles are congruent. These two big triangles here. So that is 10 degrees as well. Well, 10 degrees and 10 degrees, that is 20 degrees. Um, since these two triangles are congruent, AL will be congruent to AQ, and that means it is an isosceles triangle. So this big angle here would be 80 degrees. That is what we know so far. So that is 10 degrees. And this, this angle here is actually 80 degrees. And the same thing over here, that is 80 degrees. Well, based on the construction, we know that HQ is congruent to HR, but HQ is small d, so this one is small d. And now we want to look at this triangle here. ADH is an isosceles triangle. From A to D is B plus D. That means from A to H is B plus D. But from A to B is small b, that means that from B to H, from B to H will be small d as well. B plus d on the left hand side, and b plus d on the right hand side. And now I want you to look at this. Look at this point h. From h to q is small d, from h to r is small d, from h to b is small d, and from h to d is also small d. That means that q, r, b, and d falls on a circle with center h. Actually, we can construct that circle with center at h. And we're going to make that circle. Well, I have pulled out the circle here, and it is the center of the circle H. And now, I would like to look at this angle here from B to D to A. From B to D to A. Let me connect B to D. From B to D to A. Well, this is 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees. This is 50 degrees. And this angle is actually the unknown in triangle problem number one. I hope you remember triangle problem number one. This is 50 degrees. And that is 60 degrees. 
is 60 degrees and we are looking at this angle and this angle is actually 30 degrees we know that from triangle problem number one and we want to find out what is this angle here well we know that it is 60 degrees this angle here is 60 degrees and that is 80 degrees 60 and 80 that is 140 degrees and then we'll make this angle 40 degrees that means that we'll make this big angle 70 degrees and then we'll make this angle 110 degrees because it is a strict angle here but we know that since this is a quadrilateral inscribed inside a circle it is a well-known fact that the sum of the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle is 180 degrees so this is 70 degrees the sum of these two must be 180 so B R Q from B to R to Q is 70 degrees from B to R to Q this angle here is 70 degrees but we know that this big angle is 80 degrees that means this small angle here is 10 degrees we are very close to solving the problem um, if this is 10 degrees this is 10 degrees so that will make this triangle here A, B, R and I saw this triangle but we know that from A to B is small b that will make B, R small b well small b here small b here 10 degrees and 10 degrees but B, R is small b and that will make B, Q B, Q small b as B, Q small b because this is how we construct how we construct these two segments so from B to Q is small b but from B to A is also small b that means B, Q, A this triangle here B, Q, A is isosceles but this is 10 degrees and that will make this angle here again one more time this is an isosceles triangle B here, B here this is 10 degrees and that will make this 10 degrees but this is the unknown what we're looking for we're looking for angle B, Q, A B, Q, A is actually the angle beta which is 10 degrees I want to make an additional comment on why this angle has to be 30 degrees well actually that is the problem from triangle problem number one but uh, I just want to make an additional comment well we know that HBA is actually collinear well we know that this is small d and this is small d so this is an isosceles triangle but we know that this angle is 80 degrees well a h d is 20 degrees here 80 and 80 degrees but this is an well look at this this is an isosceles triangle this is 80 and then we'll make this 50 degrees and then we'll make this angle 50 degrees but we know that this angle here this angle has to be 80 but this is 50 in other words this one has to be 30 degrees and I, I think that may make make it more clear to to the audience why this angle is 30 degrees and actually that is triangle problem number one
And that concludes um, the solution for triangle problem number three. And um, in the next video, we will talk about uh, how to find a general formula for arbitrary isosceles triangle and arbitrary angles um, formed by the segments inside the triangle in the base of the triangle. And hopefully you will join me um, watching video number four. Thank you.